chapter 21. Uh, back in the Old Testament, that's uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, fourth book in the Bible, chapter 21. It's good to be here. I appreciate all of you coming. And the uh, message the Lord gave me many years ago, and I've used around the country. And um, I felt like bringing it tonight. If somebody here tonight needs this, there ain't doubt in my mind. If you're here tonight and you're not right with the Lord, I want you to listen. If you've never been saved, listen carefully. Numbers chapter 21. And uh, we'll start reading there. Verse number 4. Numbers chapter 21 and verse number 4. Please uh, stay still now and give me attention as we read the Scripture this evening. Look at verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in Oboth. Now I want you to think on this scripture tonight. And I want to preach on the subject, look and live. Here in the Bible, we find an amazing story in the Old Testament. One of the saddest things about Christianity today is that some Christians' constant preoccupation with the New Testament and almost a total ignoring, in most cases, of the Old Testament. Uh, some of the greatest stories in the Bible are found hidden back in these Old Testament books. And we do well to study them. Um, some people uh, only believe the Old Testament. If you're an Orthodox Jew tonight, an Orthodox Jew only believes the Old Testament. They do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, therefore reject Him. Yeah. And the New Testament, uh, they're, they're still looking for the Messiah. That's why the Jews will believe the Antichrist is Christ when He shows up and make a covenant with Him. Because they'll believe that He is the Christ. They reject the New Testament. Then on the other hand, you have people who only believe the New Testament and ignore the Old Testament. And only practice New Te the Church of Christ. Uh, or water dogs, as we refer to them, uh, is, are people who say we only go by the New Testament. That's why if you went to a church of Christ, they would have musical instruments because the New Testament doesn't mention musical instruments. And they say since it doesn't mention them and they're totally scriptural, then uh, then they don't have them. That's why. But they have this little thing when they go and sing a beep and tell them what key to sing their song. A little tiny organ. That's really a microphone, but it's, it's representing uh, uh, like a little pitch pipe that they use. And uh, they ignore the, uh, the New Testament or the Old Testament because that's why they don't have any musical instruments in their church. And they say, well, the Bible says uh, that, you know, the old te you know, Church of Christ believes that a person must be baptized in water to go to heaven. They're confused on that doctrine. And a uh, preacher come to a Church of Christ preacher one time, he said... Uh, he said, well, you don't have to be baptized. The church of Christ preacher said, you do too. He said, no, you don't. He said, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized. He said, oh, yes, he was too. He said, no, he wasn't. He said, oh, yes, he was. He said, it, it, where, where do you get that? He said, well, the thief on the cross was a former follower of Jesus, and he just had backslid and got right and rededicated his life there on the cross, and the Lord accepted that, and he had got baptized back several, several months or years before that. And he said, hey, you know that. He said, well, the Bible don't say he didn't. Uh, so he must have. And the preacher said, did you know Simon Peter, his mother-in-law, with a forty-four caliber pistol? And he said, he did not. Where'd you get that? He said, well, the Bible don't say he didn't, so he must have, right? 
And that's why that's why a lot of folks are. They they ignore the Old Testament and believe the New, or believe the New and ignore the Old. Now the truth is, listen, the truth is they work together. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Let me say it again. You some of you won't get this for a few years. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, the New Testament revealed. There are types and shadows hid in the Old Testament that are only revealed in the New Testament. But all New Testament truths are found in the Old Testament. They're only hidden by types and shadows. And there, there's plenty of them. That's what I'm going to use tonight. Uh, uh, it, there's plenty of types in the Bible. I could go all night talking about types in the Bible. There's Abraham in Genesis chapter 24. Did you know Abraham is a picture of God the Father? Uh, Isaac is a picture of God the Son. The Spirit, uh, the uh, servant there is a picture of God the Spirit. He tells the Spirit, the servant, go into a far country and get a bride for my son Isaac. That's a picture of the Holy Spirit going into this world, calling out a bride for the Son, Jesus. It's all in type and in picture. Joseph, if you study the life of Joseph, you can learn more New Testament truths studying the life of Joseph than about any, anybody else. 152 places the life of Joseph typifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. He was betrayed by his brethren, right? He was rejected and sold and put into the pit, type of the, of the death of Jesus. But God brought him out, type of the resurrection, sold into a far country, exalted at the right hand of the king. The second time, his brethren was made known. All of that is New Testament. You can't read the story of Joseph without seeing Jesus, 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 yeah. all the way through it. I remember reading about the study, uh, the, the story of Jacob there in the book of Genesis. And you know, I read that story about Jacob, and a preacher told me, he said, now, Dad, he said, when you read the Bible, you ought to be able to find Jesus on every page. So I thought, well, I'll try that. I read through Genesis. I was finding him right and left. Every story. There he was. There he was. And I came to that story about Jacob. And it said that Jacob went out there one night and he got sleepy. And he pulled up big old rock and laid his head down on a rock. And when he did, he had a dream. Uh, I know how he had dreams. I've had motels where I had my head on a rock. Uh, and, and then sometimes it's a little flat pillow. And I have to use three or four of them. I dream too. Uh, but he had this, had this dream. And he had this dream that he saw a ladder. The Bible said the ladder went from earth to heaven. God was at the top of it, and the earth was at the bottom of it, and the angels of God were ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. And I remember I read that. I remember I wasn't about 19 years old. And I read that and I thought, now Lord, what does that mean? And all of a sudden, the King James Scripture clicked in my head. And I caught that little phrase, here's a ladder, it goes from earth to heaven. God's at the top of it. The earth's at the bottom of it, and angels are going ascending and descending. And I said, I've heard that somewhere before. Where have I read that phrase, ascending and descending? And I said, I know where it was, John chapter 1. And he told the disciples when he's calling them out there, Nathaniel, in the last part of John, about 50, 51, along in there, he, he called Nathaniel. He said, I saw you over there in the fig tree, under the fig tree. And Nathaniel said, how'd you know that? He said, man, you ain't seen nothing yet. He said, you think that's something? Hereafter, you'll see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I said, glory to God. The angels of God were ascending and descending on Him. That ladder was Jesus. I thought, that's perfect. Who else? I mean, who was it that made a way from earth all the way to heaven? Who is it that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? No man comes to God except by me. Who is it that said, if you're different, you're the same as a thief and the robber trying to climb up some other way? And I thought, Lord, I like to shout it. Let me tell you something, people. This King James Bible is put together in such a way, there is no way in the world that men could have come up with a Bible. I'm glad we've got a supernatural book. You may not don't have much of a preacher, but we've got a supernatural Bible and a perfect God, and we don't have the best church building in the world, but we got something better than that. We got a Bible with a hitch in it. It's fit together, it's interwoven, it's intertwined, and one part complements the other. I remember reading their story about the Exodus and Egypt. You're coming out of Egypt's bondage. That's a picture of salvation. And boy, they come out of Egypt's bondage. Red Sea, baptism, wandering in the wilderness 40 years. A picture of wandering in this old world. Canaan, picture of heaven. I know all the preachers say Canaan is any type of heaven. They just don't know no better. Canaan is a double type. 
Canaan is a double type. You listening? I'm not the only preacher you're going to hear say this, so you better remember. Canaan's a double type. Most preachers will get up and they'll say, Canaan's just a type of the, of the uh, spirit-filled life. It is that, but Canaan is a type of heaven. I mean... Coming out of Egypt, you got baptized, you're in the wilderness 40 years, and then you cross into the promised land. And so tonight, all of those are pictures. I remember reading a story about Exodus and Moses, and I'll never forget them stories. I read them, I like to shout it. I remember Moses come out there, and you know, old Moses had his rod, and he had his rod there, and God told Moses, He said, Now, Moses, did you take that rod? And God got in that rod. And I'll never forget reading them stories about how that Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And boy, here they went. And he'd take his rod and stretch it out like that. And the water would part and open up. I remember reading over there. One time old Moses, bless his heart, he was the pastor of the only church in the world. He had 1,500,000 in Sunday school with no bathrooms and no air condition, and no nursery. Now, brother, he had some headache. Now, I mean, that man, Lord, the Bible said he wasn't the meekest man on the face of the earth. He had to have a lot of God and gut and grace. He pastored 1,500,000 people in the wilderness with no bathrooms. Amen? We got one, ladies. Quit your griping. Amen? And you know what? Old Moses came out there, and the Bible said he went out there one day, and there was a fussing, you know, like church members do. And there was a griping. And they said, we ain't got no water. We ain't got no water. We want water. Water! 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 I mean, they on and on and on. A million of them. And finally, Moses said, look, y'all, you're getting on my nerves. And he went over and they said, Lord, these people need some water. Will you give them some water? And you know what the Lord said? He said, Moses, you take that rod there. And he said, you take that rod and you go over there and you hit that rock. There's a big old rock. Listen to me. God could have just spoke and water would have fell out of the sky. God could have spoke and water would have squirted up out of the ground. God could have spoke and the rock would have gushed out water. But He said, Moses, take that rod and smite that rock. And God said that for a reason. And boy, I'm telling you what, He went over there and He said, All right, people, if you'll hush a minute, God's going to give you some water. So He takes that rock and goes, Wow! Like that. And when He did, that thing opens up like a fire hydrant. And water comes down and about drowned them people. I mean, they're jumping around in it, filling up buckets. I mean, they're jump dancing around in it. And they're saying, Woo! Boy, you're the best preacher ever was. We're going to buy you a brand new camel as soon as they come out, the 07s. And boy, we're going to take care of you, Moses. You are the best preacher I've ever... Yeah, you are the greatest. But did you know what? You know what that's a picture of? That rock was a picture of Jesus Christ. When He smote Him like that, that was a picture of what was going to happen on the cross of Calvary one day. When they smote Him there... And the water that come down is the forgiveness and the water of life that springs up inside us. I'm telling you, brother, listen, I could never open my New Testament and preach you the gospel from now on to doomsday out of these Old Testament stories. And I'm telling you, brother, you know, you know what happened a little bit later, don't you? They run out of water. Here they come. More water. More water. More water. We don't like you. We're going to vote you out. You know how church people are. You're the greatest thing in the world one day and they hate your guts the next day. Every preacher knows what that's like. But I've had people pat me on the back. Ain't you, Brother Gary? Say, man, I love you, Brother Danny. You're my favorite preacher in all the world. Next day, <laughs> I, feel, I feel it right. So I don't really pay a whole lot of attention when people say that. They say, we want water. We want water. He said, what did you do with all that water I gave you the other day? They said, we drunk it. He, you couldn't have drunk all that. I, you women didn't have to wash your hair every day. Why do you wash your hair every day? It don't get dirty. And they say, because it won't fix right. Well, I never heard tell of such a thing. That's what they say. They don't wash your hair because it's dirty. They wash it because it won't fix right. That's what my girls say. I used to tell them, I said, you don't have to wash your hair every day. It ain't no wonder you can't do nothing with it. It's, it it'll give it a few days to get nasty and then wash it. It'll look better. And I said, no, Daddy, it won't fix right. And you know, this, he said, if you, he said, why do you wash it and then grease it up and put grease in it again? And he, I can't, they said, we want water. We want water. We don't like you. We're going to vote you out and get us another preacher. And boy, he had a headache that day. And one of them old deacons' wife fussing at him. And she wrote him a nasty letter and wouldn't sign it, you know. I think you're the worst preacher ever was. I can't believe you'd let us do without water. I had a lot of confidence in you. But now we have no water. And I would, you know, and not sign it. You know how them low down uh, cowards are. That light letter won't sign him. And you know what? She wrote him a letter like that. And he had a headache that day. And that old deacon's wife hollered and said, You ain't much of a preacher. 
And boy, it took all he could do. Oh, Moses, I'm going to get to my message in a minute. I'm just talking to you for a minute. And old Moses here, he took, here, he took that rock and his veins put that on the side of his head. And Moses had a problem. Somebody tell me what Moses' big problem was. Temper. He had a temper. He'd slap you upside the head. I mean, he was meek, but I mean, that old boy had a temper. And he'd come over there, and he said, I'm going to think this where you want to think. I'll knock you in the next week, sister. And, and it took all he could do to keep him hitting her with that rod. And he went over, and the Lord, he said, the Lord, he said, Lord, they want more water. What am I going to do? They want more water. Lord, I'll tell you what. She says, one more word to me. And the Lord said, you better just chill, boy. Now, you got temper. going to get trouble one of these days. And he said, I'll give him some water. He said, Lord, I can't... In her. She got me crazy. Let me hit her just one time, please. And the Lord said, no. Now you act right. And you go back over there. And he told Moses, he said, you're going to get some more water. And you go over there and do what to that rock? Somebody tell me. Speak to that rock. He said, you speak to it. God told him to speak to it. But he went back over and he said, all right, I'll go over here and speak to this rock. And about, you know why God told him to speak to the rock? Because the, the rock had done been hit one time. That's a picture of Jesus dying on the cross. Jesus can never die on the cross twice. That's why the Catholic Church has that every single Sunday. You don't do it every Sunday. It only happens one time. And boy, he said, if you smack that thing again, you're going to mess up one of my types. And I don't want my types messed up. So Moses could hear. And he said, here are you rebels. And about that time, that deacon's wife said, down with Moses. He ain't much of a preacher. I tell you one thing, I ain't got no confidence in her. He said, Wham! And when he hit that rock, you know what he done? He messed up the type God, and God didn't let him go in the promised land because of it. I'm telling you, these types and shadows are right on the money here in the Bible. Now, let's look at this one tonight quickly. I'm just going to give you three things, and, and you can, we'll go get you some ice cream. You listen to me? Number one, we're going to look at these three here tonight. Everybody listen up. Let me tell you a Bible story, okay? Just like I told my kids when they was little. Here's a Bible story. They're out here wandering in the wilderness. A million and a half of them at least. And they're out there and the people start griping. You know how you get when God blesses you? You start griping. God's been good to you and then you, you're to, you soak up His blessing and fuss and bellyache and gripe and other words that I can't say because I'm a preacher. And uh, you, you say you complain a lot. And boy, I'll tell you what, uh, you, you just complain and you complain and you complain. And the Lord said it displeased Him. You know one of the worst sins that you can commit is complaining and griping. The last thing any of us here ought to do tonight would be complain. You live in the greatest country in the world. You live in the most beautiful part of that country. You are on the smack dab buckle of the Bible belt. You've heard the gospel all your life, most of you. You're saved and your name's written in heaven. You're not in Africa worse than a false god dying with AIDS going to hell. There is the last thing any of us ought to do ought to be complaining. We ought to be shouting our fool heads off every day of our life for what God's done for us. And well, they complain, and they complain, and they complain. And the Bible said God sent little snakes. These little red snakes about that long look like little copperheads. Just come out all over the camp, and people started dying. And then the Lord made the remedy here, and then they looked and lived. You got that story? Three things about it. Number one, I want you to notice tonight the resemblance between their disease and our disease. What was their problem? Sin. What's our problem? Sin. You know what our problem is tonight? Sin. Our problem's not the government. Our problem's not gas prices. Our problem is sin. That's the world's problem tonight is S I N sin. We've been snake bit. We've been bit by that old serpent. The Bible said in Romans 3.10, for all have sinned. As are written, there's none righteous. No, not one. All have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. The devil is pictured by these little snakes. So these people out here and they're saying, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. All we have this old man every day. I'm sick and tired of it. I wish we'd have stayed back in Egypt. Why'd we ever get saved? I just, I was having more fun back there in the world. I, boy, the Lord don't like it when people start talking like that. When they start grappling like that and the Bible said, the Lord said, wham! And when he did, their snakes about that long got all over the camp of Israel. They started biting people. They was biting the little boys and girls. They was biting Mamma. And they was biting Papa. And they was biting Uncle John. And they was, they was and, and biting Aunt Susie. And they was, they was biting everybody. They was biting everybody. And there was and people swimming up. And they got a disease. And people started coming in. You'd see a big old swelled up place right here on their arm. Or their jaw. They was down digging taters out of the garden. And maybe one come out and got them right 
there. Their shoulder be swelled up. They got a disease. Snake bites. Snake bites everywhere. Brother, I'm telling you, they, they were bitten. The Bible said sin at last bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. It's a picture of me and you. I got bit when I was little growing up, and you did too. And I'm telling you, it's universal. Every part of their camp was affected. Every part of the world is affected tonight. You couldn't go down one little street in Israel. You couldn't go down one little uh, tent or, or, or anything. Whatever they lived in. They might have been like that Indian I heard about the other day. They said that uh, he drunk four gallons of tea. Uh, and I'm telling you, they said it was awful. He drunk all them four gallons of tea. And, and that night he drowned in his teepee. Uh, but anyway, it might have been like that. They, they went in all like this. And buddy, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, some of you blondes are slow. Uh, but anyway, i tell you, boy, they, they drowned. There was people laying over here. There's people laying over there. 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 They was bit. They was bit. It was everywhere. There was people bit. It was universal. And I'm going to say to you tonight, sin is the same way. Now, one street in Morganon where you won't find the results of somebody bitten by sin. You can't go down one boulevard in Charlotte or in Asheville or from here to, uh, to, to Mount, down there to uh, Gastonia or Kings Mountain or Shelby or Rock Hill or York or Lamar or Taylorsville or, or anywhere in Marion or anywhere in Burke County where sin has not messed up people's lives. Ever trailer park, ever big shot house you go to, you find the results of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, sin is universal and it's called out of problems in this world. Not only that, but it's fatal. If they didn't get help from these things, they died. They died. And the Bible said, much people died. They was having funerals every day. People come down to there, Lord, what happened to Grandma? Well, she's out there in the garden working, and one of them snakes got her. What happened to Papa? Well, he was in good health, but he's sitting over at the fireplace the other night, and he went out to get a stick of wood. One of them got him on the hand, and it killed him. It was fatal. Seems like that. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. And death's why, that's why we have to die. You know what's going to kill you? Sin. You're the healthiest person in the world. And sin will still kill you. Sin will still get you. Sin will wipe you out. Sin, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, brother, caused more trouble than you'll ever get out of. The Bible said the wages of sin was death. Their, the disease was fatal. Amen? Some of them said, well, it's all in your mind. And some man come in one time, he said, Lord, look at that. They said, it's all in your mind. Yeah, you're right. right too. It ain't all in my mind. People are laying there dead. They just, they just thought they was dead. Christian scientists said they just thought they was dead. You know what? That's a lot of people believe. They believe that everything's in your mind. You ever met these people believe that? That's what a Christian scientist believes. They don't believe there's no such thing as pain. They're hurting you think you are. If you don't cut, you, cut your arm, but you think, oh, this must hurt. I'm hurting. And they say, if you just think you're not hurting strong enough, that there is no pain because your mind will go over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that little boy uh, said, uh, preacher, one of them Christian signs come to the door. Little boy, she said, where's your mama? He said, mama's sick. He come back. He said, no, your mama's not sick. She just thinks she is. He said, okay. Next week, come back. He said, mama's sick. He said, no, your mama just thinks she's sick. And he came back next week and he said, where's your mama? He said, mama still thinks she's sick. And he said, that's right, son. Mama just thinks she's sick. He came back a week later. Where's your mama? He said, mama thinks she's dead. <laughs> Listen, you know, there ain't no thinking to it, man. You really are dead. You really are sick. Hey, no, they was sick. Somebody said, it's all you mind. No, it wasn't. It was in the railboat. Hey, Amen. Like that lady went to back, she said, that devil's trying to tell me. One lady came in, she said, the devil's trying to tell me my back's hurting, but I'm not going to accept it. Listen, you nut. That ain't the devil telling you that. Your back really is hurting. I've heard people say, the devil's telling me I've got a backache, but I'm not going to believe him. Okay. I'm telling you, if your back's hurting, it's hurting. Ain't that right? If you quit lying, the Lord might heal you. Just say, I'm a dying, Lord, would you help me? And Lord, might help you out a little bit. Well, you know, you uh, trying to say, I'm not going to believe this. I'm not going to accept this. Well, that's crazy. And that's why a lot of them said, no, I'm not snake bit. 
I'm not sick, Bill. He didn't bite me, but I fell over dead. I'm telling you, brother, it wasn't in their mind. I'm telling you, sin's not in your mind either. You go to a psychiatrist and they'll say, well, you were just raised that way. They told you all your life this was wrong and it's been beating your head. No, sir, brother. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Sin not just in your head. Uh, there's a reality to sin. And God gave us a conscience. When we sin, we know it. And we know it. we got a disease. Well, that's their disease in ours. But now notice the resemblance. Secondly tonight, the resemblance between their remedy and ours. There's a great resemblance between their remedy and our remedy. Christ on the cross, the serpent on the pole. By the way, look here. Moses went to the Lord and he said, Lord, what am I going to do with these people? They're dying like crazy. Lord, everybody's about to die. And the Lord said, All right, Moses. I'm fixing to give you a message. You got your pencil? And Moses said, Yes, Lord, I do. What you want? Number one. Number one. Lord said, Make a serpent. He said, I'm sorry, Lord, I didn't get that. I thought you said make a serpent. He said, I did. Make a serpent. He said, But God, you don't understand. That's our problem. We've got hundreds of them things. That's why everybody's dying. We don't need no serpents. That's the problem. Do you understand? The Lord said, make a serpent. He said, don't you think it'd be... He said, that's what's wrong with you humans. You always think this, and you always think that. Now, you going to just do what I tell you? Or you just want me to just walk off and fool somebody else? He said, okay, okay, I'm sorry. You're God. What do you want? A serpent. One serpent. In his mind, he's thinking, why would God tell me to make a serpent? Why would He tell you to make a serpent? That's what the problem is. And the Lord said, okay, no, put serpent on pole. Got it? Put serpent on pole. Point two. What else, Lord? The Lord said, lift it up in the sight of all the people. Number three, lift it up in the sight of the people. What's that? Now, closely, firstly, secondly, thirdly, closely, the Lord says, whosoever looketh upon it shall live. Whosoever looketh upon it shall live. There's your sermon. He said, what? That's it? If I go out there and show them a serpent, they're, going, they're already mad at me. They're already complaining. And the Lord said, are you going to preach what I tell you to? Or am I going to find me somebody else? He said, yes, Lord. You're God. I'm just a preacher. All right. So Moses went out. He had the remedy. He had three points in his sermon. He had the remedy. I don't know about you tonight, but I can't hardly think about shout just thinking about it. Oh, Moses went down. He all that week, he prayed. He had Aaron. He said, Aaron, come here. I need you to be at the tent Saturday night. We're going to have a big meeting and everybody's got snake bit. I want them to be there. Miriam, his sister Miriam, he, she played piano. He said, Miriam, I want you to be that ready to play. Aaron, you're going to lead the singing. He said, I'm going to preach and we're going to get everybody there. They are, you understand? He said, yes, sir, Moses. And more, they printed up flyers. Snake bite, snake bite. Anybody that's been snake bit, cut old fashioned tent meeting Saturday night. God gave Moses the remedy. Moses is going to preach. And boy, there was fall flyers all over town. The old boys are sticking them up on telephone poles. And boy, they're sticking them up in the post office. They had them under, on, on the sides of their camels. Uh, when they, they walked road town. And boy, they, and they had them on the sides of their wagons and buggies. And they said, big service Saturday night. Anybody snake bit, come on. God's got the remedy. Moses got the remedy. God gave Moses a message. And boy, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was talking about it. And you know what that was? Whether that was a picture. Now, the reason God told Moses to make a serpent, let me tell you something. You don't hear something this evening? The reason God told Moses to make a serpent, the serpent was what was causing the problem. So God took what was causing the problem and Moses made a likeness of the problem and put it upon a pole. Thank God. That's why you know that men could have not have written the Bible. If I'd have been writing that, if you'd have been writing that, we'd have said on that post, wouldn't we? We would have said, put a lamb on that post. You're sure you would. We would have put a lamb up there. No, sir. God said, take the serpent. He said, take the serpent. Put it on that pole. And He said, lift it up. God knew what was going to happen about 4,000 years later. God saw His Son died before it ever took place. You say, well, preacher, why did He take a serpent? Listen, boy. Uh, listen to me. I, I can't hardly think about it without shouting my head off. I think about this. Listen, you know what God did? He took problems, sins, 
serpent. He said, make something just like that problem and put it on the pole. Did you hear me, people? He said, make something that's just like that problem and put it on the pole. Ladies and gentlemen, what is our problem tonight? What is our problem tonight? Sin. You know what God did for me and you 2,000 years ago? He took something that looked just like our problem and put it on the pole. When Jesus was on the cross, He became sin. The Bible said in Romans 8, 3, what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent His Son in the likeness of flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Thank God when He got on the cross, He became like our problem. In the likeness of sinful flesh. You see, when Jesus was on the cross, He turned into sin. Ever sorry, rotten, low-down thing you've ever done. When Jesus was on the cross, it put on Him. He said, put that thing on the pole and raise it up. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight, He told him that was the remedy. He could cause him to cry out. The nails didn't cause him to cry out. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The crown of thorns did not make the Lord cry out, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Sin made him cry out, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? My sin and your sin. And he told Moses, Lift it up. And so he did. Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Number three, lastly, the application of their remedy and ours. See, they had to apply it. The people had one thing they had to do. Look. That's all they had to do. He didn't say join and live. He didn't say baptize and live. Look and live. That's all they had to do. He said, now Moses, you're going to take this serpent, you're going to put it up on a pole, and it's going to stick up in front of everybody, and if a man's got a snake bite and he held up or his jaw's hanging down here, if he'll look at that serpent, then he'll live. That's all they had to do. The night that I got saved, that's all I did was look to him. I didn't straighten up. I didn't turn over and you leave. All I did was look to him. You know what we do? We make salvation too complicated. You go to a lot of churches, and Lord, you'd think, Lord, I could never get saved. You know, they say, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this. They'll add 15 or 20 things that you got to do, or you ain't saved. Let me tell you something what you do to get saved. Look to Jesus. Look at Him, brother. Look at him. Oh, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If I don't shout out tonight, I'm about to shout, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Believe and be saved. The woman at the well tried everything. And she never did get the remedy until she came to Him. Some of them probably said it was foolish. Some of them tried weeds and potions. I mean, can you imagine being back in that day? All week long, everybody talked, Are you going to go Saturday night? I don't know. The topic came up at school. Kids, today we're going to discuss snake bites. How many of you boys and girls have somebody in your family that... Make me. I do. Grandma. Mama. You know, they're all saying, well, now we know that the preacher is going to have a big thing down there Saturday night in that tent. And what do you boys and girls think about it? And one of them said, I think Moses is a good man. We're going to go. And another one said, well, Mom and Daddy said that preachers will do anything to get a crowd. And my Mom and Daddy said, they can't believe that he's taking advantage of sick people like this. And acting like he's got a cure. Probably just after their money. And they went home that, went home that evening and around the supper table. Here's daddy. Old daddy's laying in there on the couch. He ain't eating two or three days. His jaw swelled up about like that. About every few minutes. Bleh! I mean, he fills up a bucket about half full. Sick as a dog. About ready to die. And they're sitting around in there. And the little girl says, daddy. 
Preacher's Moses said, he's got something for you. Will you go with me Saturday night? Will you go hear the preacher with me? And Daddy says, I ain't going down there. i got to go to work in the morning. He goes into work, you know, and he's a dry like this. His ankle swelled up about that big. And somebody tells him, say, ma'am, I know a good psychic you need to go see. And don't you know there's a call of them 1-900 numbers or 800 numbers and 900 numbers and 1,000 numbers and 1-800-psychic. And you know, they, they, they come on, you know. And they said, uh, listen, uh, I've been snake bit. And a voice on the other line said, Ooh, wonderful things are going to happen to you today. $35 for the first three minutes. So he sticks in $35, puts it on his credit card. And said, did you know there's a ghost on the Queen Mary? And Eric Estrada said that he saw you in your last life. Said, really? Oh, you're not snake bit. No, 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 no. Oh, time's up. 35 more dollars, please. He puts the five more dollars on his credit card. I don't feel a bit bad. Well, just, just keep listening. You only think you're snake bit. This was because in your last life, when you was here the last time, people beat that in your head. I said, oh, I'm reincarnated? Oh, yes. What was it? Time's up. Thirty-five more dollars. And he said, "Oh, you were a beautiful princess in your past life. Me, I'm a man. Oh, I mean, I mean, you were, you were a great prince in your last life, and you rode horses on this beautiful farm and had a big. Oh, that's why. Yeah, yes. And you're going to find true love, and that's what's wrong with you. And true love is in your future. Thirty-five more dollars, please." Boy, don't you know they made... Don't you know people went to town on that? That's just like people today. Listen, you know, don't, don't anybody in here be dumb enough to fool people like that. They ain't telling your future. If they was real, they'd tell you something bad. They wouldn't say you was a king in your life's life. They would say you was a transvestite out in Dallas and somebody cut your throat one night. <laughs> You know, or something like that. That's what they'd say. But they don't ever tell nobody nothing like that. Who's going to give them $35 to tell them that, you know? You was a hoe in New York and, and somebody beat your brains out one night and you died with AIDS. Or no! They said, yes, yes, wonderful things are going to happen. Send me more money. And they said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm about to die. My leg swelled up and I think, I ain't, I ain't going to make it. I'm telling you, I, I, I think I'm going to cut my leg off. And they said, well, uh, they said, well, do that. Somebody else said, you need to see a psychiatrist. And this psychiatrist come to him and he said, uh, they said, do you always feel like you're snake bit? Yeah, I have for a week. I'm about to die. And they said, well, well, sometimes I feel like I'm getting... They said, you're bipolar. And I'm going to give you something. That's everybody's bipolar now. I'm bipolar. No, I'm not really, but every woman in the world is bipolar. Ain't that right, men? One day she's smiling, next day she's crying for no reason at all. All is bipolar. You don't need no doctor to tell you that. God made you that way. Us men, we're just same old boy and doll all the time. Uh, but I tell you, women are like, woo, 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 like that. Uh, but they, listen, that ain't what's wrong with them, brother. That's been my snake. You didn't know all that was in the Bible, did you? Multi personality. That's what's wrong with them people. They had multi personalities. They thought this snake me. Yeah, right. I'm going to tell you, people can say whatever they want to. They can dress it up. They can call it whatever they want to. But I'll tell you what's wrong with this old world tonight. We're sinners. We're a fallen nation of people. The world is full in the sin. And that's it in a nutshell. People don't want to believe that. The application. I'm telling you, they didn't have to know the whole Bible. He said, all you've got to do is look. The night I came to the Lord and got saved, I didn't know one verse of Scripture. I've told you before, I'm ashamed to admit how dumb I was about the Bible. I'd hate to think that I lived in this part of the country and was dumb as, as some people are about the Bible. I did not know one verse of Scripture. I, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Amen. There's PhDs in universities dying from snake bite the devil tonight, and five and six-year-old boys up here getting saved because they look Jesus and take God's remedy. It's not what you know. It's who you know. I, I, I worked with an old boss over here 
a big, old, a big old black man over here years ago, right over here at Highlander, off Jamestown Road. And he used to get by with murder. He could do anything. And I said, Walt, how in the world do you get away with stuff like you do? You don't come to work half the time, do anything? He said, Dan, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And boy, that's a truth. That's a truth. It's not what you know. Somebody said, well, I know Greek and Hebrew. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. One man said, I've studied the Bible, and I've studied the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I've studied history, and I've studied religion. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. One little old boy sitting there one day like this, and he's sitting there whittling like this. At that time, a big, fancy, long Cadillac pulled up, and I was, ah! and a man dressed up in a suit and tie jumped out and said, Hey, boy, where's that road go right there? And the little boy said, I don't know. And just kept a wheeling. He said, boy, where does this one go down through here? The little boy said, I don't know. He said, young man, what about if I turn right right here? Where does this road go? The little boy said, I don't know. He said, boy, don't you know nothing? He said, I know I ain't lost. <laughs> and just kept a wheeling. <laughs> hey, man, he no more than that fool did. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. Now, I'm going to tell you something tonight. Brother Danny, don't, hey, there's a lot in this world I don't know. I don't know a lot about Adam. I don't know a lot about how to, you know, send a rocket to the moon. Somebody said, well, do you know the situation in Iran and Afghanistan? No, but I know I ain't lost. I know I ain't lost. It ain't what you know. When I first got saved, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I called pews bleacher. I really did. I was saved three months before I knew that pews was pews. All I did was go to the basketball gym, and I called them bleachers. I'd come home and Mom say, Danny, did you have a good service? And I said, Mom, the stands was full. I remember saying that, and I, and I remember I'd been saved. I like Billy Kelly. Oh, Billy Kelly had been saved about two days, and they put him up over in Knoxville, Tennessee, and there's a thousand people sitting out there, and he said, Boy, you people sure look good out there in them pool pits. <laughs> I didn't know the difference. I didn't know it either. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a pit and that that we have seats, but but pews. I remember hearing people say pew. I said pew. It's a pew. Oh, it's the seats. I've been calling them bleachers. I remember thinking that. I, you, we, Lord, I call I call Malachi Malachi. Looked like Malachi to me. Still looks like Malachi. All the other preachers say Malachi, so I say Malachi. I get and I say over there in Malachi three ten. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse. Crazy. I call Habakkuk Habakkuk. We we thought an epistle was an apostle's wife. Really, I didn't know what it was. Some of you ain't life, and you still don't know the difference. Let me tell you, just life when everybody else lies, and we won't know how dumb you really are. But it ain't what you know, it's who you know. Oh, they come out there on Saturday night. Here it is, and I'm through. Everybody gathered! The place was packed. Moses had his pole down here. He had the serpent on the pole. He had it all down there like that. There's the serpent. On the pole. It's red. Use your imagination. He said, Moses, Moses got that serpent out like that, and he preached. And he said, I know all of you tonight are gathered here because God has gave me a message. How many of you know somebody snake bit? They're falling out in the crowd. Some of them had their barf bags. Like that. If you didn't have a barf bag, you'd pull your shirt out and just go right down like that. That's right. So you won't mess up the carpet. Don't you ever do that on this, on this floor. It's like big chunks of gravy going down your chest. And boy, I'll tell you what, that's right. And did you know what, brother? Listen, there it went. There it went. He said, God has gave me the remedy. Hallelujah. And he got through preaching and said, Aaron, turn to number 81. One just as I am without one plea. Hit it, Miriam. Miriam hit it on the piano. He said, just as I am. Without one plea, just like you are. And Moses said, Folks, here it is. And he held it up like that. And they stood there and looked at it. And conviction settled on over there. And somebody punched and said, Well, you going to go? Well, I don't know. I ain't going to be the first.
first one. What if I go up there and nothing will happen? There's a big thing hanging on my jaw. And I said, well, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> you might as well try it. You've been to the doctor. And he just shook his head. What are y'all laughing at? That's right. Amen, brother. See, you don't know all this stuff's in the Bible. You've got to know, get us, know the Hebrew to get this. And he said, well, look, man, I've done been to the doctor and I've tried everything else. And they said, well, you're going to laugh your head off if you go up there and you come back with that big thing on your jaw. He said, well, what the heck? I'm going to die anyway. And he said, all right, I'm going to try it. About that time, one of them old boys stepped out. And he was holding that thing like that right there. Lord, there, see, there it is right there. It looked like it right there. That's right. Where did that come from? Is that your ball, boy? What are you doing bringing a ball in the house of God? He's like this. But I'm telling you the way they looked. I'm telling you, I'm serious. That's the way they looked. And he went out like her and everybody was saying, But that thy blood was shed for me. And he looked up like that. And when he looked, that thing went like that. And it went, It's gone! It's gone! Praise God! It's gone! Hallelujah! And somebody went, Glory to God! Did you see that? And everybody said, Woo! I said, I know what he's doing. He paid that man to go up there. And if that was a balloon, he popped it. You know, and all that kind of... And about that time, here come another. And here come another. They had to offer service ever was. Moses said, Look and live! Look and live! Look and live! It's God's remedy! It's God's remedy! Look and live! There you go! He didn't say join the church. He didn't say give a dime. Just look and live! Buddy, word got all over town. And the next week they said, we're going to do it again, Saturday night. The tent meeting going on the second week. And all week they said, them people just got it in their mind. See, if you get anything in your mind strong enough. But I'll tell you one thing, that little girl begged her daddy and begged him. She said, Daddy, I don't want you to die. Will you go here, Preacher Moses, Saturday night? And he said, I'll go. That night they stood there on the second Saturday night. Same message. You get one that works that good, there ain't no use preaching nothing. <laughs> really, I think sometimes we try to different message. Lord, if you got one, it'll cut a tree down, just keep a cut. Right. Oh, he preached the same sermon. Look and live. This guy comes out and she says, Daddy, are you going to go? And he looked over and there's all them guys that he worked with. And this person said, He's going to go get religion. Well, we're going to give him a hard time Monday. And the devil said, Don't go. Because they'll laugh at you. And the Lord said, Guess what? You ain't going to be here Monday. You're going to be dead. See, you people that are worried about what your friends going about you, how you know you even going to see them again? And here he comes. And down the aisle he came. The little girl just a pulling on him like that. Daddy, come on. Daddy. And boy, when he went, boom, pow. Grandma shouted. They had the office time ever was. And that's what you need to do tonight. If there's never been a time when you personally, you personally, have come and said, Lord, I'm looking to Jesus Christ to save my soul. You ain't never heard the gospel no plainer than what I've given to you tonight. You listen to me? You ain't never heard it no plainer or easier to get than what I've given to you tonight. You come and look to Jesus Christ.